Just a few years ago, the subject of today's video was one of the best quarterbacks in Texas high school football, was ranked as a five-star recruit, and was eventually tabbed as a first-round pick. Unfortunately, though, that would not end up happening for him, as despite having a pretty good college career, he would not be a first-round pick, and when he got his opportunity to start, he ended up becoming a bust. In today's video, we're going to talk about the rise and fall of this player, go through his college career, and what ultimately led to him being a bust. But before we can get into it, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so quickly be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like to support the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former Baylor and Auburn quarterback Jarrett Stidham. But in order to understand what went wrong for Jarrett Stidham, we first need to go back in time. 100 miles southwest of the city of Dallas, there is a town called Stevensville, Texas. They are nicknamed the cowboy capital of the world, but not only are they known for cowboys, but they're also known for big time quarterbacks. Since 1991, Stevensville High School has produced eight Division I quarterbacks, and that includes guys such as Kendall Bryles and Kevin Kolb. But the best was yet to come, as early on in the 2010s, they had the biggest and most talented name of them all. That guy was Jarrett Stidham. This was the same high school and area where Art Bryles got famous, and everyone knew about that school in West Texas. But from an early age, Jarrett was not born in football, as he was actually born in the state of Kentucky and grew up a huge basketball fan. At the age of nine years old, he would move over to Texas, but he started to dominate in the state of Kentucky as a young kid, and actually played alongside Damian Harris, and they would become friends. Going back over to Texas though, he grew up in a rough home, and apparently it is something he does not like to talk about much, but football would become his escape from his tough family life, and he was good from the very beginning. When he arrived at Stevensville High School, he was not a quarterback, as he actually played wide receiver. By the time he was a sophomore, he had already gotten multiple Division I offers, and the team would also go on to win the state championship. His coach said, quote, Jarrett never complained once. He handled it with grace, and that is hard to do at that age. So yeah, in the spring between his sophomore and junior year, he gained a lot of attention, and offers came flying in. The craziest part was, he had never even started at quarterback before. In 2014, he would earn the starting quarterback job, and he'd go on to pass for 2,934 yards with 35 touchdowns. Not only was he great in the air, but he also had nearly 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns on the ground, and many tabbed him as the best dual threat high school quarterback in both the state of Texas and the country. Scouts and coaches were extremely high on him, and Texas A&M assistant coach David Beatty said, quote, Stidham, from a fundamental standpoint and literal quarterback mechanic standpoint, is as good as I've seen. He's very efficient, love his motion, and the guy makes great decisions. You can tell he's a very bright kid. Another Big 12 coach by the name of Cliff Kingsbury was also extremely high on Jarrett and got him to visit Texas Tech multiple times. In March of 2014, Stidham decided that is where he wanted to go, Lubbock, Texas. He became a Red Raider, and this was the first huge recruiting win of the Kingsbury era, but obviously it did not last long. Stidham would have a change of heart and committed to Baylor, saying, quote, There were certain important things in my life that I wanted to be able to do, not only in my collegiate, but hopefully in my professional career too, and I just thought Baylor was the right fit for me and what I wanted to do and everything I wanted to accomplish. He chose the Bears over Oregon, Kentucky, Alabama, and Oklahoma, and the Bryles name definitely helped get him there. He also credited the recent great quarterbacks such as RG3, Nick Florence, and Bryce Petty. Stidham was unstoppable in high school. One opposing coach said, quote, It's a nightmare trying to plan for him. You can try everything in the book, you can, you can pressure him, and he gets rid of it quick. He's athletic enough that he can scramble and keep plays alive. The receivers are good, their offensive line is good, I don't know how anybody is going to stop them. Jarrett was definitely a legend in the area, and according to 24-7 Sports, he was also a big deal. According to their personal rankings, he was a 5-star recruit, the number one dual threat quarterback, and the 13th best player in the class of 2015. Him and Kyler Murray were both legends from that class, but other sites were not as high on Stidham as they had him as a 4-star. Nevertheless, the hype for him at Baylor was going to be unreal, so how would he end up doing there? Well, Stidham arrived at Baylor with high expectations, but it was not easy at first. He said, quote, Going from my senior season straight into one of the top teams in the country was definitely a big change and a big jump. It was hard at first, but I got the hang of it pretty quick, and it was a good transition. He skipped the spring of his senior year to go play football, but after working with Kendall Bryles, he got a good read on the playbook and the system pretty quickly, but he was not expecting to play right away. At the start of his freshman season, he was the backup to Seth Russell, who was supposed to be the next great Baylor quarterback. Stidham would see action in the first seven matchups, but then one play changed everything. Seth Russell would have a season-ending neck injury, and it was now time for Stidham to get in the game. Some coaching staffs would panic, but there was nothing but confidence from the Baylor staff. Coach Bryles said, quote, It's not something that there's a lot of apprehension about. 
The guy's good. He's a good football player and very intelligent and very instinctive. Last time I looked, we're not backing up, we're moving forward. So now Stidham was thrown into the starting position, but how would he do? Well, he was actually terrific. His first start would come on the road against Kansas State, and in that game he'd go 23 of 33 for 419 yards and three touchdowns through the air, while also having a touchdown on the ground. This was an incredible first impression, and Stidham was going to become a young star at the position. He'd get put back to reality the next week though, as against number 12 Oklahoma, he goes 16 of 27 for 257 yards with two touchdowns and two interceptions. He was definitely humbled in that game, but he would bounce back a week later as he'd throw for nearly 300 yards and a touchdown in an upset road victory over number 6 Oklahoma State. Sidham didn't play a whole lot his freshman year, but he definitely made a great impression. He threw for 1,265 yards with 12 touchdowns and two interceptions and two more scores on the ground. The annoying part is that his season could have been even better as he missed the second half against Oklahoma State with an ankle injury and then Browse ruled him out for the bowl game. The sky was the limit for young Stidham, but then this was the offseason where Scandal rocked the Baylor program, which resulted in Art Browse being fired and half of the recruiting class leaving. Originally, Stidham actually planned to stay, but then he decided it'd be best to transfer for a new start. This was back before you get a waiver or didn't have to sit out a year, so in the year between his two colleges, he played at a school called McClellan. He took classes there, but they didn't have a football field, so he actually practiced at a local high school, which brought a ton of attention to him that he didn't really want. He worked on his game all offseason, and he was great as a freshman, so he was going to be in high demand in the transfer portal. But where was he going to go? Well, Stidham had his eyes in the state of Texas, as he wanted to go to Texas A&M, but he tried to force his way in the door. He said, quote, Honestly, I probably recruited myself at Texas A&M a little bit harder than they recruited me. I didn't talk to Coach Kevin Sumlin very much, but I did talk to their offensive coordinator a lot. Everything happens for a reason. A&M ended up being eliminated, and he visited both Florida and Auburn, and chose to become a Tiger because of both the fit and his relationship with offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley. As we all know, Lashley is now the head coach at SMU, so Stidham was in good hands. He would arrive as the top transfer quarterback in that cycle, and had an expectation of being good from the very beginning. He battled out with Sean White for the starting job, and Malzahn named him the starter. Stidham would go on to have an incredible redshirt sophomore season. His first start would come against Georgia Southern, where he had three touchdowns. In week two, we'd go on the road to play against number three Clemson, where he had the worst game of his collegiate career. He didn't even throw for 100 yards, and the Auburn offense only had six points. He was pretty quiet in wins over Mercer and Missouri, before he had nearly 300 yards and two touchdowns and a win over number 24 Mississippi State. The following week, they also beat Ole Miss, before he struggled in a loss to LSU. So far, he was pretty underwhelming, but then he would turn it on. He did four combined touchdowns and road wins over Arkansas and Texas A&M, and then he led them to a victory over number one Georgia. In that game, he had four touchdowns, and they absolutely destroyed the number one ranked Bulldogs. After a tune-up game against Louisiana Monroe, Stidham would beat his second number one team as they would beat Alabama 26-14. This was good enough to get Auburn to the 2017 SEC Championship game where they would rematch against Georgia and this time get blown out. Many wonder if Auburn would have won that game if they would have gotten to the playoff, but obviously they lost and they were matched up to play against UCF. UCF was obviously riding their undefeated season, and they were ready to get their next victim. Stidham threw for over 300 yards in this game, but his two interceptions proved to be costly, as UCF won 34-27, and Auburn dropped their fourth game of the year. Stidham was named the SEC Newcomer of the Year, as he threw for 3,158 yards, with 18 touchdowns and 6 picks. Going into 2018, he was seen as both a first-round draft pick and a potential Heisman contender, but unfortunately, things would fall off in 2018. While he had helped them upset number 6 Washington in week 1, he started to show major struggle against LSU as he threw two picks and a loss in that game, and then really barely filled the stat columns over the next few weeks. His best game the rest of the season was probably in a win over number 20 Texas A&M, as he had 239 yards and two scores, but for most of the season, Stidham was nothing more than a game manager and definitely regressed from his 2017 form, and this did not help the Tigers either. They ended up going 7-5 and five in the regular season, where they were then matched up to play against Purdue in the Music City Bowl. This was one of the most lopsided games in bowl history, as Auburn won 63-14, and Stidham was pulled pretty quickly. He finished the 2018 season with 2,794 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 5 picks. Because of his physical measurements and his decent college career, Stidham was still seen as an NFL quarterback. He ended up getting taken in the fourth round by the New England Patriots and was going to become the backup to Tom Brady. 
He saw this as a terrific fit. As Stidham said, quote, There are so many intangibles that I can soak up from Brady. Everyone wants to be like Tom Brady someday, and I've got to take it one day at a time. In 2019, Stidham was obviously a backup, and he finished the season with 14 yards and an interception. Definitely not ideal, and once Tom Brady left for Tampa Bay, many expected Stidham to step up and be the starter. The Patriots also brought in another former Auburn alum in Cam Newton, and the two would battle it out for the starting job. Unfortunately, Stidham did not play well, and despite the Patriots having a bad season, he rarely saw action in the game. He appeared in five total matchups, finishing with three interceptions and two touchdowns. Obviously, the Patriots did not see any potential in him, as they decided to draft Mac Jones in the 2021 draft, and they also brought in Brian Hoyer to be the backup. It didn't help that Stidham suffered an off-season injury, so he was the third-string quarterback, and only suited up for one game, in which he did not appear. The Patriots completely gave up on him after this, as in May of this past spring, he was traded for a 2023 sixth-round pick to the Las Vegas Raiders. He was reunited with his former offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels, and he made the roster, becoming the backup to Derek Carr. Right now, it looks like Stidham will be a journeyman backup quarterback at best, but he's not even shown that he can be a backup quarterback. His stats have been pretty poor, and he is now on his second team, and I think he'll likely be out of the NFL soon. So what ultimately went wrong for Jarrett Stidham? Well, I think there are three reasons why he had to fall from grace. One, he was not used the way he should have been. In high school, the guy scored touchdowns on both the ground and through the air, and in college, he never really made much of an impact on the ground. Add in the fact that Auburn did not have the best NFL system, so he was definitely not prepared for that. Two, he struggled with injury throughout his career as he got hurt at Baylor, had some nagging injuries at Auburn, and then obviously got hurt with the Patriots. Finally, he didn't really have opportunity. Whether it was planned all along or not, Coach Belichick knew what he had in Stidham and decided he needed to sign Cam Newton, and this never gave Stidham an opportunity to actually play. Overall, Stidham was an awesome player to watch, as I definitely remember his memorable time at Baylor and at Auburn, and I thought he was going to be the guy for New England. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, but he is now happily married, and it seems he'll probably move into the next stage of life soon. But what do you guys think? If you're a Baylor, Auburn, or Patriots fan, why do you think Jarrett Stidham never panned out? Who is another big-time player or five-star recruit I should take a look at next? And what other topic, player, situation, or team should I cover in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.